It's interesting when you make a film, particularly when you really have planned everything out in advance. I think another way of expressing that would be you have no idea what you're doing. Almost immediately, Elsa would hold the photographs up in front of the camera, virtually hiding herself from view. So you would see these shots were the only thing that's visible are Elsa's hands, maybe the top of her head. I thought, should I be doing this? And then I thought, yeah. It's kind of an amazing visual metaphor of Elsa disappearing behind her pictures. I do believe in good scenes in movies. And there are a lot of good scenes in this movie. For me, I can't speak for you. Um, or, or when you use the footage of someone saying, does the camera tell the truth? And she says no. And then she sort of repeats that theme. As a, as a documentary filmmaker, did, did you like that answer? Yeah, I do. There's this illusion that somehow photography has anything whatsoever to do with truth telling. It's really nonsense. At a much earlier stage in my career, uh, I was making the Thin Blue Line. Uh, it was being rejected by the Academy as being unsuitable as a documentary film because of the presence of reenactments. As if somehow, if you obey a set of documentary rules, uh, whatever they might be, shooting with available light, really not touching anything, interfering in any way, better yet using a handheld camera, blah, 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 you all know the rules. The only thing that guarantees truth, if anything in fact does guarantee truth, and we live at a time where there's an obvious assault on truth, um, is pursuing it, it's a quest. Uh, it's not something guaranteed by the selection of a film stock or a type of camera. Uh, consciousness is a reenactment of the world inside of our skulls. So if that's what documentary filmmaking is, I'll have nothing whatsoever to do with it. <laughs>